So the Walking Dead's final season, um, it's got a, a new updated synopsis. final season it's already been filming um part one comes out on august 22nd i believe is when the when the first the last season begins airing um mm -hmm. and the last season is 24 episodes so it'll be split up into eight episode like three different parts um so it it's kind of funny to say that like we're starting the last season because the last season really won't be done until over a year from now you know, I mean, we still yeah, have we still have a lot more so, Walking Dead left. Yeah, because The Walking Dead literally does like that half season and then disappears for like another six months and then pops up again. Well, now we're getting that twice. <laughs> yeah, now we're doing it twice and just so, Jesus Christ, guys. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I'm like, I'm sad to see that show go, but yeah, you know, let's just let's just pull the bandaid off at this point. I just want to see it. <laughs> you sound like the people on Facebook. One of my favorite things ever to do is after an episode of The Walking Dead, get on Facebook. My mom does this too. No, shout no, no, out, no, no, shout no. out, shout out to I'm my not, mom because people on like, Facebook, they're like, "The Walking Dead is the worst thing I've ever seen," but I loved it when Glenn died. Like, that's not me. <laughs> like, yeah, that's I know. Not me. I know. Right up. I'm just saying, like we've been built up to this whole story. I've been following it for all this time, and. The one thing I hated the most was the mid-season finales. Those always pissed me off because it's just like you're prolonging a story. Like, my God, guys, just give me give me the story. I want to see it. Like, I'm I'm all for seeing it. I'm excited to see it. But if I got to wait another whole year just yeah. for the end. I've <sighs> always thought The Walking Dead could do – I think they would be better off to do maybe 12 episodes instead of 16. I've always thought that. I mean, and I, I, I mean, adore I the can, show, I but can. there there are episodes of that show that you could cut out for more or less. Not all of them. Not there's yeah, not a yeah. lot of them, but there are a few episodes in that series where it's kind of like we didn't need, like this is not really contributing anything new, <laughs> especially around the after the prison before terminus thing. Before we just kind yeah. of we were just all separated and wandering out in the woods, and it was like, are they going to find each other? Where are they going? What's going on? But the both of us can agree that 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 little snippet of like before Terminus was honestly one of the most slow paced, uh, really like slow, most slow paced section of this entire series. So like, yeah, I feel like we could definitely like remove that. Yeah. And still have a decent show or story, I guess. You probably you, you could. But yeah. um we're talking the end of the story, obviously, and it's got the new synopsis. So I wanted to read the new synopsis. So here is the new synopsis for the final season of The Walking Dead. Previously on The Walking Dead, our survivors confronted past demons and combated new threats with friendships and relationships suffering from the mounting collateral damage that is the apocalypse. Alexandria is severely compromised, left a former shell of the home that it once was from the carnage and devastation left behind the whispers. So already we know Alexandria like is screwed. I mean, yeah, it's and we Alexandria. We talked about that um, in the our in a, the movie, the last movie news show we did. I don't, I'm all screwed up because of the days. Um, we talked about that that behind the scenes picture of them walking in Alexandria. It looks like a ghost town. It looks it got wrecked. It looks terrible. It looks like it looks like it got wrecked even more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like I know, I know. Whenever Maggie came back, I know that they were just like now rebuilding it to a certain degree. Um, I feel like throughout this and throughout the next couple of um, throughout the last season, like we're gonna see Alexander get fucking rocked. Yeah. Obviously by the community, the Commonwealth. Sorry. Yeah. The Commonwealth, and I mean they're gonna be like, all right, well we gotta fuck them up because they literally just destroyed our home. Right. So the, the synopsis goes on to say, now all who live in Alexandria struggle to refortify it and feed its increasing number of residents, which include the survivors from the fall of the kingdom and the burning of Hilltop, along with Maggie and her new group, the Wardens. Alexandria has more people than it can manage to feed and protect. Their, situ their situation is dire, excuse me. 
as tensions heat up over past events and self-preservation rises to the surface within the ravaged walls. They must secure more food while they attempt to restore Alexandria before it collapses like countless other communities they have come across throughout the years, but where and how. More haggard and hungrier than ever before, they must dig deeper to find the effort and strength to safeguard the lives of their children, even if it means losing their own. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to those at Alexandria, Eugene, Ezekiel, Yumiko, and Princess are still being held captive by mysterious soldiers who are members of a larger and unforthcoming group. I love how the synopsis pretty much, uh, <laughs> like, gives, gives like, the idea of, like, they don't know who they are. But let's be honest, like, most of, most of the Walking Dead fans are already oh, yeah. well read up with who the fuck this mysterious group is. Yeah, because as I said, it's fucking Commonwealth, right? Well, <laughs> it's funny. I I kind of wait. Where is a Commonwealth? Like in the uh, like, I'm gonna die. If it's at what Kentucky. point or like location? Where is location? It? Because if it's in um, Kentucky, I'm gonna lose my shit. No, I don't think it's in Kentucky. That would have been great. I'm not gonna lie. That would have. I have great. to look it up. Let me see. Because it's always been in like this, like below the. It's Bible, in Ohio. But, it's Jesus, in, it's in Eastern Ohio, so not far from Kentucky. Jesus, what they they've been in Atlanta though. They gotta go far. Well, Alexandria is in Virginia though. They're not in Atlanta anymore. Yeah. Holy shit, they really did go far. Yeah. No, I because I keep thinking like it's like within like under the Bible Belt where like Georgia, Alabama, all that stuff, South Carolina. I figured it was like around there, but damn, they went far. Yeah, they've they've come. Hell, a long I hate way. driving up to your house because it's long. <laughs> it's not long. How? Do you imagine walking that? Jesus Christ. So be it. Um. So there, there's kind of a lot to unpack here. So, you know, now all who live in Alexandria struggle to fortify it and feed its increasing number of residents. Food is a prop. Food and water has been a problem for a little while. They kind of talked about that a little bit even during the Whisperer War. Um, well, they've been talking. It was like a main focus in like those extra six episodes that they made, because like that was the that was the problem. It was like there is no food. Like we we've, we've searched everywhere and there's no food. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it, I mean, you. I mean, you just said that you can only if Alexandria is in one spot, you can only go out so far to find food before you've searched everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you just so, say that? No, I didn't. What did you do? I just opened this bitch with my ring. Oh my goodness. I just learned something new. <laughs> Boy. There you have it, folks. That's a new skill, guys. Let me know. You can do it with with your ring. Just letting you know. Pretty dope. Shout out. But okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that, no, was just, I just, that just surprised the hell out of me. You're good. I can tell. <laughs> um so I mean, and you have to think it's not just the, the people from Alexandria when back from when Wick, 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 when Rick was around. You have the hilltop people. You have the mm. kingdoms people. You have the rest of the saviors that are still alive and switch sides to Rick. You have Maggie's group. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different people from different communities like together now. Um, and I mean, it's been what six years since Rick. So I mean, it's. I don't know. I mean, it's been a little bit. Um, it kind of, I, tell me what you think. D to me, especially the end of this synopsis makes it seem like trying to restore Alexandria is going to be a big part of this last season. Yeah. And I don't know like, if it's, it's going to happen. Be, it's going to be like, it's going to be like by the mid season finale, whenever they actually leave. Or. It's going to be like a couple episodes before then when they actually leave and they end up finding Commonwealth. I think either either it's going to be like the mid-season finale is going to consist of them either leaving Alexandria or they've already left it and they find the Commonwealth. Probably. Which well, again, and if like the I, next, I was going to say if the next season, the like final season, it's just going to be about, it's just going to consist of Commonwealth. I'm going to be tore apart because it's like, I want, I want to see more of Commonwealth. I don't want it to end of them just discovering it, or I don't want them rushing the story of Commonwealth. Well, and I don't know if they're going to rush it. I honestly wonder if uh, the whole, because you have to think, you know, there, 
obviously there's what's going on in the main show, but there's a lot of other stuff going on with the CRM and World Beyond and who took Rick, what's the whole AB thing. I mean, like, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle that I think we we don't have enough knowledge to put the puzzle together yet. Mm. I think now that we're adding Alexandria and or, um, Commonwealth into the mix, I think Commonwealth is a part of this whole civil republic military thing because the whole deal with Commonwealth is they they have like a, a president and legislators and like they're trying to like live like the United States was before the apocalypse and mm. Rick's whole deal is like you can't like that's not like you can't do that anymore like it's not things have changed we don't it's not the same set of rules that we had um before then so I well I don't know I was gonna say like in, like I I got that I kind of understood that situation whenever they initially got to Alexandria but as you've seen like in the extra six episodes um like you you notice like how uh monotonous has gotten with like these walkers like they're deteriorating they're like killing them has just become more like a chore than it is like a basic basis mm-hmm. of survival good way of putting but, like, it yeah. yeah so it's like now with like commonwealth and the trm like that's gonna be like they're slowly starting to build back up because it's like the zombies are no longer like becoming more of a it's no longer becoming like a big ordeal you know what i mean yeah. well and and it's i think they're a little bit more sporadic too now if you have a horde it's like your favorite it's thing a, a, zom- a zombie like, horde if you have a horde that's another that's a problem like that's, that's yeah that's, that's a, a big deal story. but mm-hmm. 10 of them sporadically around is not a big deal anymore because they're mm-hmm. so used to it um and i i don't know i think that's part of what sets i that that's part of why the beginning of this series and the end of this series, like the 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 first half and the second half feel so different i think is because mm. the second half they're not really afraid of them anymore the first half of the series they were still kind of afraid of the zombies like the zombies yeah. were still um they still i guess resembled people mm-hmm. like there was a story behind them still yeah you could you still... could look at a walker and be like holy crap she was pregnant or you can look at a walker and be like, wow, what was his, you know, where did they come from? How did they become a zombie? What, how did they get bit? The mm-hmm. zombies now, they're so rotted and they're so decayed that it's kind of like, they're just, it, it it's like a monster. It's, it doesn't really resemble a person anymore. You there's know? No, yeah. Like there's no more humanity within them. And they're not afraid of them because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting to think about it. The fact that like it is. the fear of it was the history of the individual like you still feel somewhat conflicted with killing a zombie because you can still tell the story of them before they became a walker right but now again like they're just so deteriorated and they're just like breaking down so like you really can't depict what the story was so it's just like yeah Yeah. it's basically a monster and that's kind of like it's low key kind of sad to think about it. It is sad to yeah. think to like to like if you were to put yourself in that situation like this far into the apocalypse, where they're almost the same, they're almost the equivalent of, say, like a a deer or something like that. Like you, like you don't know what his story is. It's just except you can't thing. eat them. <laughs> yeah, except, except you can't eat them. Don't eat them, guys. Don't eat them. But it's it's like it's like a wild animal just running right. around. Like you really don't know whether or therefore care of yeah. their history because they're just another beast that either needs to be killed off or steered away. Right. And that's not a, that I, I don't, we don't say that as a dig at the show or at the writing or at Greg Nicotero. No, I it think, makes no, perfect I think that's, sense. It makes I think it's perfect beautiful. sense that they're, that they're decaying. And I mean, it's mm-hmm. been what, I mean, it's been six, I, I want to say it's been going on like 12 years now. Yeah. Which 10 I don't know to how 12 long. years since, it since it started at least since rick woke up because rick woke Mm -hmm. up i think like five or six months after like society collapsed um so it's been it's been it's been a while now like and after a while people are going to be the only thing they have to worry about because there's not really going to be any walkers left obviously Mm. when people die there'll still be fresh walkers but the, as far as the ones that have been dead for a long time, there's not really going to be too many of them left. So really, yeah. I, it, it's an it's kind of an interesting it's an interesting conversation to have. My light 
is all twisted. I don't know why. Which, um, which again, look, like Greg Nicotero and his writing with his whole storyline of The Walking Dead, it's probably one of the most um, well thought out and I want to say beautiful of a, of a zombie story because you're actually like, you're legitimately giving it time to evolve and you can like see like, I would say The Walking Dead is probably the most realistic point of view of what a zombie apocalypse could look like. Yeah, you know what I mean, I would agree with so, that. Yeah. So like whenever, like now, now that we've like, because we basically like, if you think about it, we've experienced a zombie apocalypse throughout like, you know, uh, what's it called? What's it called whenever you're like, by, you're by curiously living a zombie apocalypse with this show. So you actually can tell like how life probably would have been like. Right. And the fact that Greg, Greg Nicotero could figure that out and create this story, uh, basically showcasing the evolution of a zombie. For sure. Not really more like the, the decay of a zombie. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty well thought out story. It's like, yeah, I could totally see that. Like everyone yeah. that's watched the show can definitely tell that, like, in the event of a zombie apocalypse, if we were to survive that many years, that's pretty much what's going to come down to is the zombies are no longer become as fearful as they are. It's now going to be cl- the collapse society, right? Like how, like how, like it's going to be now people that you're going to have to worry about. Which, yeah. which by the way, uh, Fear <clears throat> the Walking Dead kind of like hinted at that in the beginning a little bit. It was just like how people are going to react to it. It wasn't just about survival. It was just how did society try to be more? How, how did society try to hold it together in the event of the apocalypse? You, know what you I mean, mean? You mean initially? Yeah, initially. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm glad you bring that up too, because Fear the I, those first what is it six episodes of Fear the Walking Dead? Mm-hmm. I love those mm-hmm. first six episodes. Um, yeah. And I'm not. I'll admit it. I'm not completely caught up on Fear the Walking Dead. Um, I'm only through like season four. I need to I need to catch up one of these days. It's on my to watch list. Um, but I love that first season because, and, and I've said this before, and this kind of even ties into what you were just talking about with you're kind of telling a story of the zombies as well as your main characters. Um, one of the things that I love the most about the whole zombie apocalypse genre of film and TV is that it's kind of telling multiple stories within a story because you know i mean think if you saw somebody getting mugged in the middle of the street you that would be like oh my god i gotta help them like that would be Mm -hmm. a big that would be a that'd be kind of a traumatic thing but the zombie apocalypse it's so interesting because obviously you're following one central character because that's how that's how stories work um, mm-hmm. It wouldn't, it, you wouldn't, it, if you had a movie that was just random people dying and running and um, it, there'd be nothing to follow. The storyline wouldn't make sense at all. There'd be no plot, but you're following one character and you're kind of, like you said, living vicariously through them, having to navigate, you know, you're running through a neighborhood trying to escape and there are people dying and getting eaten and bitten and running and killing each other all around you. And you just kind of have to ignore that and do what's right for you. So I, I, I've always found it so interesting about that subgenre that it's just the, the amount of stories that you can tell are infinite because there's so much going on. And again, like you said, with fear of the walking dead, it's like a, um, it's like a social experiment on how would society react to something like that happening. And we've even mentioned it. We mentioned it in our zombie episode, um, which has almost 2.5 K. Yeah, guys. Views. Shout out. I am Thank so you. glad you guys like that. Thank Wait, you that was, so that was, much. That's really our first, that, like it was our first thousand viewers. And then it was our first 2000 viewers. Thank and you. And then guys. two and a half thousand. Yeah, I mean, that thing yeah. is kicking butt, man. Thank mm-hmm. you all so much. Um, but as, I don't know, what was I even going to say? As we mentioned in our zombie episode, um, you know, it's it's just it's an interesting concept um, how people react to society collapsing, and even look at the pandemic. How people lost their shit during the pandemic. People were mm. losing their minds at the beginning because they thought this was the end times. Um, yeah. And I mean, I don't blame anybody. I, I was scared. We were all scared. You know, nobody yeah, knew what was going on. So. I, you know. So. 
Exactly. It's just, it's an interesting social experiment. Um, but anyways, kind of back to the synopsis and the end of The Walking Dead. I mean, The Walking Dead is masterful in how it's told this story. And I mean, again, typically I'm always more interested in that whole society collapsing beginning. How do people handle things falling apart? But I have loved watching these characters navigate five years, six years, eight years, ten years after the apocalypse together, losing each other, gaining people, fighting other people off, fighting walkers. I mean, it, it, this show, we were talking about this the other day with Breaking Bad because, you know, I got Julia to watch The X-Files. She loved it. And she finally got me to watch Breaking Bad after all this time. And, you know, Breaking Bad is Breaking Bad is one of the best TV shows I've ever watched. It is. And I told her, I was like, I'm going to restart The Walking Dead after after we finish Breaking Bad. I think I have like three or four episodes left of that show and then El Camino. And then I'm going to restart The Walking Dead because I want to restart it. Um, I want to restart it before the final season, I think. I'm going to try to finish it out. It's probably not going to happen because that's a lot. But I'm going to try to finish it out before... Um, you know, but at least do the first five or six seasons, maybe um, before the final season starts, just because I, I kind of want to relive that again, because there's so much that I mean, when a show's been on this for this long, you kind of forget, you know what I mean? Like, I, I remember I've rewatched episodes of the of TWD before where I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot that that even happened. You know what I mean? Or my dad will call me and, and be like, dude, do you remember this happening? I don't even remember this episode existing. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But um, I mean, The Walking Dead is going it, to it's going to carve its way as one of the best TV series of all time. Yeah, it's going to it's definitely it really will. Be, <laughs> I keep In my opinion. This. Yeah, because. I don't know if you keep track of this. Like, I don't know if it's VH1 or something like that. There's a thing called like the decades, which if you guys haven't checked, that's where we based off our series of the decades of the movies was based off this TV show um, called, you know, the eighties the seventies the sixties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which pretty much tells like, what were the most like impactful moments of that decade yeah. that created that decade. And 100%, whenever they, people are going to talk about like 2010, like when that comes, when that documentary comes out, you know, later on in the future, they're going to talk about The Walking Dead and how oh, it was for sure. so culturally impactful for sure to, to culture, pop culture in general. Yeah, By the so, way, check out our episodes on the seventies, eighties, and nineties in film. Check out our decades; it's pretty good. Shameless plug: we did a whole, uh, we did an episode through a three episode series on uh, the seventies, eighties, and nineties. So that was really a fun did. one. That those really were was. some fun episodes. I I really enjoyed those. Mm-hmm. um so comment down below let us know uh what do you think of this new synopsis what do you think is in store for us in the final season of amc's the walking dead